Hey there, what's up and welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Hannah. I'm a photographer and video creator and welcome to my channel <laughs> where I chat all things photography, camera gear, film photography, video, travel, stuff like that. And this week we're gonna dive into Lightroom. I get a lot of questions about editing and how to use Lightroom and how all of these different sliders work together and what exactly they mean. So I figured I'd make a video that is pretty easily digestible to better understand what you're doing when you're in Lightroom Classic. And this week's video we will cover what is a histogram and how does it work and how do you change it? <laughs> as well as the basic corrections panel just below the histogram in Lightroom Classic. First things first, what is this very big and scary box that we always see in the right hand side of our Lightroom panels but we never pay much attention to? That is called a histogram and it's actually pretty important in the editing process and it's not as big and scary as it looks, especially as you get to know how it works. And so what is it? It's a graphical representation of the data in your image. So it tells us how our image is exposed and where that data exists within the image. It's a really precise way to check exposure as every single image has a very wide range of tones from the darkest darks to the brightest brights. Now that we understand a histogram isn't big and scary, how do we read this thing? <laughs> it's like any other graph we've looked at before. It's got a vertical and horizontal axes. And the way I look at this is as a gradient. So on the left side of the histogram, you're gonna have your darkest dark tones. And as you move away over to the right side of the histogram, you're gonna have your brightest bright tones. And we read this by the height of these peaks that we're looking at. <laughs> so these peaks are telling us basically how many pixels within your image have that value. And also when you click your image, you can hover over it and it will give you the exact percentages of that part of the photo. Let me show you an example. So I have this photo here that I took on my road trip when I was driving to Maine back in December. And you can see here in the histogram in the upper right hand corner that I've got some pretty high peaks in my shadows and my darker portions and as well as one particularly in the brighter portions of my photo. And as I hover over it, you can also see those percentages start to change. You can also see that in the brightest portions of this photo, there are the blue tones and then in the darker portions, which is this lower part, we've got a mix of all of those primary colors. So it helps not only tell us where we're seeing those brighter portions and darker portions, but also where we're seeing the most of specific colors. Another helpful thing about the histogram in Lightroom and really in camera as well is it allows us to see when there's clipping in our image. And clipping happens when our camera sensor didn't capture all of that data because either we overexpose or underexpose way too much. And it can also happen in the editing process when we're adding and taking away certain values within that gradient that I mentioned that's within our histogram. So in Lightroom, you can see these two triangles in the top left and right hand corners of the histogram and those triangles will turn white when there is clipping and you can also tell that there's clipping because these peaks will be either all the way to the left side of the image or all the way to the right side of the image and respectively that means your darkest darks are clipping and your brightest brights are clipping. To show you an example of that, I'm just gonna slide my exposure <laughs> slider all the way down to show you what clipping looks like in a histogram. And you can see that this is now white and it's telling us where our clipped um, shadows are happening. So if you have clipping, the peaks will be all the way to the left side of the histogram. And conversely, if you have clipping in your brightest brights, the peaks will be all the way to the right side of the histogram. Let's dive into some other examples so you can see what different histograms look like. There's not necessarily a one size fits all for histogram because photography is very personal and it's up to the photographer's discretion on what they want their image to look like in camera. So aside from this mountain photo that we have been staring at, <laughs> I wanted to bring in this one because you can see all of the tones are really heavily leaning to the right side and because we've got so many whites in this photo, it was important to make sure that I exposed properly in camera so that I ensured that I wasn't clipping. It's really easy to clip these really bright tones, especially when the sky is already blown out, you've got a reflection of that gray sky on this building. So I just wanted to make sure in camera that I captured as much data as humanly possible. <laughs> One last example of what a histogram could potentially look like, I mean, Again, histograms aren't one size fits all. These are just some photos that I thought would be good examples of this to show you it in action. This one specifically, I feel, is really evenly distributed. 
and we've got some darker tones over here in the darks and then as you move over to the right side you've got some really brighter brights so you've got some peaks and then you've got some valleys here and then you've got even more peaks so i feel like it's really well distributed when we're talking how it was exposed in camera and this is one of my favorite kind of histograms to work with because it requires the least amount of tweaks possible things aren't always perfect and i know sometimes we tend to underexpose or overexpose in the sake of preservation but in my humble opinion I think it's always best to try and get it as close to real life and properly exposed as possible in camera so that the editing process is a lot more seamless all right why is a histogram important if we can visually see either through our edf or when we take a photo if the image is exposed properly truth is you can't actually tell if an image is exposed properly especially when we're talking those really dark parts of our image and those really bright parts of our image so a histogram allows for exact precision on seeing if we're clipping in our image so once your image is clipped in camera that means your camera didn't capture that data so that data doesn't exist Lightroom is not going to bring back any data that never existed in the first place. And a lot of mistakes I see beginners making, and I made myself, I can't even tell you how many times, is underexposing. And I would underexpose in the thought I was preserving my highlights when really I was just not capturing any data in the darker parts of my image and all I had left were the brighter parts of my image. Those looked great, but I couldn't bring back those darker parts of my image because the data ceased to exist. So had I been using a histogram, I would have been able to understand where there was clipping and where I was losing data in the first place because it allows for preservation of that data. And as a reminder, Lightroom is a tool and it can only stretch a photo so much. Underexposing and overexposing is definitely a stylistic choice when we're out in the field, but it's always best to retain the data where you can. I don't have a specific way that I always shoot my photos. With travel and nature photography, it's really situational and based on the mood that I'm trying to capture and convey. And I will say very rarely do I underexpose these days because I never wanna lose that data. I want to avoid clipping at all costs. And it's really great in my camera, I have an EVF. And then within that EVF, I'm able to see my histogram as well, right when I'm taking the photo. If you have a mirrorless camera, perhaps you're able to add your histogram to your EVF. Um, if not, every camera, I think, has <laughs> a histogram available in some capacity. So just make sure that you can reference that when you're shooting. It'll be super helpful and it will make your editing process a lot easier. So now that we've covered all of that and we understand hopefully what a histogram is, does, and how to read it, <laughs> let's get into manipulating this histogram. The first way I wanna show you that you can manipulate the histogram is by actually touching upon it in Lightroom itself. So if you see me here, I'm gonna grab my darker portions and I'm gonna slide them to the right start to brighten those up and then grab the lighter portions and bring them a little bit more towards the center to flatten out those highlights to get a little bit more definition. So you can see that manipulated the basic corrections panel. Personally, I don't really like to use the histogram in this way. I like to use the basic corrections panel itself. So that's what I'm gonna show you. So let's move into this basic corrections panel. First up, we've got white balance, and this is assigned when you take your photo, either auto or manually selected. Because I'm always out in nature, usually I'm shooting between 5600 and 5800 Kelvin. I like to get it as close to real life as possible, which is why I manually select it. And I'm not gonna dive too much deeper into white balance, so if you want a full video on that, let me know in the comments below. But I will go ahead and just show you what this eyedropper tool does. So you can see over here in this photo to the left side under navigator, as I'm sliding this eyedropper around, those tones are really changing. <laughs> So that's a pretty easy way to manipulate your white balance. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that eyedropper right back there. I'm not gonna touch this temp and tint slider. What I will say is that this temp slider adds blue hues or yellow hues to counteract warm or cool casts that are within your photo. And the tint slider adds green hues or magenta hues to counteract green casts and magenta casts. <laughs> Very seldom do I select these in my editing process. I like to keep them as camera standard and as they were shot when I was actually taking the photo. I look at exposure and contrast as the parents of highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. 
Your exposure is going to adjust the brightness of your image and all of those really bright, bright parts of your image. As you can see, the histogram is sliding left to right. Contrast helps with dynamic range. It can add or take away dynamic range in a photo. So you can see as I'm sliding it to the right, it adds contrast so the darkers get dark and then the brights are getting brighter. But when I slide it to the left, it's decreasing the contrast, which means the darks are getting lighter and the brights are getting darker. And the word cinematic is tossed around a lot these days. And this slider is one of the ways that you can start to add a little bit more of a cinematic flavor to your photo. Because part of what makes a cinematic image is that darker, more contrasty type of photo. So this is partly where that can be achieved. Let's move down to highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. So these are going to bring back or take away visibility within that area of your image. So these sliders are only affecting those parts of your image. So the highlight slider is only affecting the highlights. The shadows are only affecting your shadows. The whites are only affecting your whites and the blacks are only affecting the blacks of your image. Are you still with me? Hope so. Get up, stretch your legs, take a sip of water, drink some coffee. Okay, we're back. The final portion of this basic corrections panel is the presence section. So what is this? <laughs> Texture and clarity actually work pretty similarly, which is adding in detail or taking away detail within your photo. So watch me slide this texture detail. It's getting that ethereal, creamy look as I slide the texture all the way to the left. And then let me bump it up. It's really punching in that detail when I slide it all the way to the right. Same goes for clarity, except for me, clarity, is one of my favorite tools. <laughs> I love using this clarity slider. So you can see that it's starting to look even more creamier than the texture slider did. And then it's gonna even add more of that HDR vibe to your photo. So I used to actually use this slider quite heavily to the right side. And these days I'm actually using it to the left side because I really like that creamier, softer look, um, buttery, you know? And the dehaze tool is really helpful, really in nature photography and a lot of what I do, because it helps to fix the haze in a photo by adding contrast. And a lot of the photos I take are often landscape and what comes with landscape is a lot of atmospheric noise and lots of haze. So this tool is really helpful for bringing back those details in a photo that often end up looking washed out when you first take it. These tools, it's important to note, do affect the overall image. So if you're wanting to um, affect only a specific part of your image, I would say use the dehaze tool with a mask. That's usually what I do. Not gonna cover masks in this tutorial. Again, if you want a mask tutorial, let me know in the comments below. Finally, we've got vibrance and saturation. What is the difference between the two when they both affect color? So vibrance intensifies the color of the more muted tones within your photo typically leaving the more saturated colors alone, whereas saturation affects and intensifies all of the colors. Let me show you in the slider. So you can see that the more muted colors in this photo are the blue. So I'm gonna slide that vibrance all the way to the right. It's really intensifying those blues, but keeping these tones in the oranges pretty neutral. Whereas if I slide that slider all the way to the right on saturation, it's intensifying every single color within this photo. So there you have it. That was a big old brain dump. And I hope you're able to now understand what a histogram is and how the basic corrections panel manipulates that histogram in Lightroom Classic. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys next week where we chat all things Tone Curve, another graph in Lightroom that doesn't have to be big and scary. <laughs> See you there.